Hi. There are a lot of interesting and sometimes bogus claims made on the internet and on YouTube and in the media about what EVs can do and what they can't do. One of the more egregious ones I've heard recently was the claim by Porsche that its braking system that doesn't use a single pedal drive system like many other EV manufacturers is actually more efficient. Their argument goes something along the lines that coasting is going to be a more efficient way to drive the car than using regen to recover the kinetic energy and store it back in the batteries for later use. Now this sounds intuitively correct. I mean, we all know that from driving ICE vehicles in the past, if you coast a lot in your ICE vehicle, then you'll use less petrol or uh, less fuel, let's say. And so that gives you a better outcome, a longer range for the car. But what seems intuitive isn't necessarily always right. And in fact, when you look at the data, you can see quite clearly that the Porsche claim is incorrect when you compare the efficiency of their, their Porsche Taycan with say a similar vehicle like a Tesla Model S that uses one pedal driving. So I'm gonna go through that data with you right now and you'll see what I'm talking about. And at the end, I'll explain to you why this is the way it is and what your intuition tells you is not necessarily correct. So I've just landed on the Inside EVs website and on their website, they have a very useful chart that they've compiled that shows you the energy efficiency that's published by the EPA, an independent authority in America. And they've tested every car and this is a summary of their results. So this is set out like a league ladder with the most efficient car at the top being the Hyundai Ionic Electric. And as you go down, the efficiency falls off. This was published in February 2022, so it's about a year old now, but it's good enough for our purposes. The other thing to note here is that you've got two bands. So you've got a number here, 253 watt hours per mile. That's the efficiency on a combined cycle for the Hyundai Ionic. Uh, the green bar shows you its performance around the city, which is 232 watt hours per mile. And in the, on the highway, it's 279. And what you'll notice here is that this is a similar pattern for most EVs where their highway performance is not as good as their round town performance in terms of efficiency. And there's a good reason for that. And that is that around the city, you think about it, you're stopping and starting. All of that braking presents an opportunity for the battery system to recover energy and put it back into the battery. Whereas when you're on the highway, you seldom use the brakes. Uh, you, you know, you might back off the accelerator, but you tend not to use the brake pedal. So there's very little opportunity there to recover any energy. The other point is that highway driving is the worst possible scenario for an EV because at high speed, the effect of wind resistance and drag becomes very pronounced. So as we go down, you can see that all the cars are listed here. The second best result is for the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive at 255 watt hours per mile. And we go down, we see all of the cars here. It's a very interesting chart to have a look at if you've got the time. But I'm going to scroll down now to the bottom to see who the real laggards are. And wow, look at that. What do you notice here? They all seem to be European cars and they all seem to have the badge of either an Audi or a Porsche. And what do we know about that? Well, Audi and Porsche both have opted to use a um, system of braking that doesn't uh, use a, deliver a single pedal experience. So they've, they've kept the braking separate from the accelerator. And what we note here is that they've all got the lowest efficiency of all the electric cars available on the market. So straight up, you can see there's a problem here. There's a problem with the claim from Porsche that their braking system is so efficient. But what really you need to focus on here is the fact if we choose one of the, any one of these Porsches, if I choose, let's say, let's choose the, what, 2022 Porsche Taycan, just the general one, not, nothing clever, the Porsche Taycan with the 93 kilowatt hour battery. If we look across here, what you'll see is that its highway performance is actually better than its round town performance. So what this is telling us is that it's more efficient on the highway and less efficient around town. Now, that is totally abnormal for an EV if it's been well designed. And there's only one possible explanation for this, and that is that it's not recovering energy 
efficiently when it's driving around town. And so what that really means is if the driver is coasting, as Porsche tells you is the best way to conserve energy, then if they're coasting and then they're coming up to the, the end of a line of traffic and they're having to you know, use their friction braking to pull the car up in time so they don't hit the car in front of them, there's no opportunity there to recover energy. And so it's not going back in the battery and it presents itself in this rather damning result where you know it's getting really woeful efficiency around town. So, I mean, that tells you all you need to know, right? The claims from Porsche that their system is better is completely bogus. And to be frank, I'm surprised they have the audacity to even put that forward as a proposition when this data is out there in the public domain and everyone can see it. But you know what? They just assume that most people are not going to look at this. I mean, maybe it's right. Maybe the average Porsche owner has so much money they don't care. And that's fine. If they don't care, they don't care, right? But the claim should not be made that a car is more efficient when it clearly isn't. Okay, so I think the numbers speak for themselves. You can clearly see that the Porsche Taycan with its two-pedal braking system is nowhere near as efficient as a car like the Tesla Model S with a one-pedal system. So why is that? Well, uh, it's fairly obvious when you think about it. If you are riding a bicycle and you're coming down a steep hill and you can see another steep hill up the other side, then obviously if you let the bicycle coast to the bottom and then coast up the other side, you'll only have a bit of hill at the top to deal with uh, using the old fashioned muscle power. But what would happen if there was a train line at the bottom of the hill and a level crossing and you can see there's a train that's actually parked there. It's not moving, maybe it's broken down, who knows what, but you cannot pass over that, that rail line. Well, you're going to be pretty disappointed because you're going to realise that you'll have to break at the bottom and come to a complete halt, which means you're going to have a big effort to get up the hill on the other side. Pretty sad. Now, if you had an electric bicycle, well, it wouldn't be quite so sad because you know at least that as you're coming down the hill, that bicycle is going to recover the energy, the kinetic energy from the bicycle's forward momentum, and it will put that back into the battery, which you can then use to get most of the way up the other side. Obviously, you're not going to have 100% conversion of the energy, so there will be losses and it won't get you right to the top or even as high as you would get if you were able to coast. But it will get you a fair way up the hill and reduce the amount of effort needed to get to the top. Well, it's no different for a car. If you can scavenge the energy from the vehicle when it's needing to um, pull up, say in a line of traffic, you've got a break at the end of the line, and as you break, you want to recover that energy. If, on the other hand, you just coast to that line and then you have to apply friction brakes right at the end to bring the car to a stop, uh, then you're not going to recover as much energy, which means you're going to have less in the battery when you need to accelerate and move forward. And if you multiply that one instance by all the times that you're stopping and starting in a urban driving situation where there's traffic, traffic lights, stop signals, stop signs, and all the other reasons that you need to pull up, then this is a major difference in the amount of energy required. And you can see in the EPA statistics that I've provided that this results in poor energy recovery and therefore poor efficiency of the vehicle overall, which is why probably the Taycan has one of the shortest ranges of any EV you can buy, which is pretty disappointing when you think of how much money it actually costs. So that's it. That's the end of the story. But if you have some comments to make or some counter information that I haven't considered here, then by all means share it in the comments. But please, just don't give me your emotional feelings on why you think it's a better car or why you think it's a more efficient car. If you've got an argument, you should be able to support it with facts, with data. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.